Lesson 5 Spirit Empowered Witnessing Sabbath Afternoon July 25 Among those to whom the Savior had given the commission, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, were many from the humbler walks of life, men and women who had learned to love their Lord and who had determined to follow His example of unselfish service. To these lowly ones, as well as to the disciples who had been with the Savior during His earthly ministry, had been given a precious trust. They were to carry to the world the glad tidings of salvation through Christ. When they were scattered by persecution, they went forth filled with missionary zeal. They realized the responsibility of their mission. They knew that they held in their hands the bread of life for a famishing world, and they were constrained by the love of Christ to break this bread to all who were in need. The Lord wrought through them. Wherever they went, the sick were healed, and the poor had the gospel preached unto them. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 105 and 106. All who are ordained unto the life of Christ are ordained to work for the salvation of their fellow men. Their hearts will throb in unison with the heart of Christ. The same longing for souls that He has felt will be manifest in them. Not all can fill the same place in the work, but there is a place and a work for all. Every gift is to be employed for the advancement of His kingdom and the glory of His name. To everyone who offers himself to the Lord for service, withholding nothing is given power for the attainment of measureless results. For these God will do great things. To young men and young women, as well as to those who are older, God will give power from above. With converted minds, converted hands, converted feet, and converted tongues, their lips touched with a living coal from the divine altar, they will go forth into the Master's service, moving steadily onward and upward, carrying the work forward to completion. The Faith I Live By, page 247 As the Apostles set forth the glory of the Only Begotten of the Father, three thousand souls were convicted. They were made to see themselves as they were, sinful and polluted, and Christ as their friend and Redeemer. Christ was lifted up, Christ was glorified through the power of the Holy Spirit resting upon men. By faith, these believers saw Him as the one who had borne humiliation, suffering, and death that they might not perish but have everlasting life. The revelation of Christ by the Spirit brought to them a realizing sense of His power and majesty, and they stretched forth their hands to Him by faith, saying, I believe. Then the glad tidings of a risen Savior were carried to the uttermost bounds of the inhabited world. The church beheld converts flocking to her from all directions. Believers were reconverted. Sinners united with Christians in seeking the pearl of great price. Christ's Object Lessons, page 120 Sunday, July 26 Jesus and the Promise of the Holy Spirit that Christ should manifest himself to them and yet be invisible to the world was a mystery to the disciples. They could not understand the words of Christ in their spiritual sense. They were thinking of the outward visible manifestation. They could not take in the fact that they could have the presence of Christ with them and yet he be unseen by the world. They did not understand the meaning of a spiritual manifestation. The promise of the Comforter presented a rich truth to them. It assured them that they should not lose their faith under the most trying circumstances. The Holy Spirit, sent in the name of Christ, was to teach them all things and bring all things to their remembrance. The Holy Spirit was to be the representative of Christ, the advocate who is constantly pleading for the fallen race. He pleads that spiritual power may be given to them, that by the power of one mightier than all the enemies of God and man, they may be able to overcome their spiritual foes. Reflecting Christ, page 129. 
as his followers, met together after the ascension, they were eager to present their requests to the Father in the name of Jesus. In solemn awe they bowed in prayer, repeating the assurance, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. They extended the hand of faith higher and higher with the mighty argument, It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. And Pentecost brought them the presence of the Comforter, of whom Christ had said, He shall be in you. And he had further said, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. John chapter 14, verse 17, and chapter 16, verse 7. Henceforth, through the Spirit, Christ was to abide continually in the hearts of his children. Their union with him was closer than when he was personally with them. The light and love and power of the indwelling Christ shone out through them, so that men, beholding, marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Steps to Christ, pages 74 and 75. The Holy Spirit brings power that enables man to overcome. It is through the agency of the Spirit that the government of Satan is to be subdued. It is the Spirit that convinces of sin, and with the consent of the human being, expels sin from the heart. The mind is then brought under a new law, the royal law of liberty. Our High Calling, page 152 Monday, July 27 An Empowered Church the Holy Spirit must be the living agency to convince of sin. The divine agent presents to the speaker the benefits of the sacrifice made upon the cross, and as the truth is brought in contact with the souls present, Christ wins them to himself and works to transform their nature. He is ready to help our infirmities, to teach, to lead, to inspire us with ideas that are of heavenly birth. How little can men do in the work of saving souls, and yet how much through Christ if they are imbued with his Spirit? The human teacher cannot read the hearts of his hearers, but Jesus dispenses the grace that every soul needs. He understands the capabilities of man, his weakness, and his strength. The Lord is working on the human heart, and a minister can be to the souls who are listening to his words a savor of death unto death, turning them away from Christ, or, if he is consecrated, devotional, distrustful of self, but looking unto Jesus, he may be a savor of life unto life to souls who are already under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and in whose hearts the Lord is preparing the way for the messages which he has given to the human agent. Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, pages 144 and 145. In obedience to the word of their master, the disciples assembled in Jerusalem to wait for the fulfillment of God's promise. Here they spent ten days, days of deep heart-searching. They put away all differences and drew close together in Christian fellowship. At the end of ten days, the Lord fulfilled his promise by a wonderful outpouring of his Spirit. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. Acts chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 and 41. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Notwithstanding the fierce opposition that the disciples met, 
In a short time, the gospel of the kingdom had been sounded to all the inhabited parts of the earth. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 15. Notice that it was after the disciples had come into perfect unity, when they were no longer striving for the highest place, that the Spirit was poured out. They were of one accord. All differences had been put away. And the testimony born of them after the Spirit had been given is the same. Mark the word. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Acts chapter 4 verse 32. The Spirit of Him who died that sinners might live animated the entire congregation of believers. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, Page 20 Tuesday, July 28 The Holy Spirit and Witnessing Stephen saw the resistance that met his words and knew that he was giving his last testimony. When he connected Christ with the prophecies and spoke as he did of the temple, the priest, pretending to be horror-stricken, rent his robe. To Stephen, this act was a signal that his voice would soon be silenced forever. Although in the midst of his sermon, he abruptly concluded it. The prisoner read his fate in the cruel faces about him, but he did not waver. The fear of death was gone. The enraged priests and the excited mob had no terror for him. The scene before him faded from his vision. To him the gates of heaven were ajar, and looking in, he saw the glory of the courts of God and Christ, as if just risen from his throne, standing ready to sustain his servant, who was about to suffer martyrdom for his sake. In words of triumph Stephen exclaimed, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Lift him up, page 104. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? The disciples, upon hearing this account, were silenced and convinced that Peter's course was in direct fulfillment of the plan of God, and that their old prejudices and exclusiveness were to be utterly destroyed by the gospel of Christ. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. The Story of Redemption pages 290 and 291. Christ promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to His Church, and the promise belongs as much to us as to the first disciples. But like every other promise, it is given on conditions. There are many who profess to believe and claim the Lord's promises. They talk about Christ and the Holy Spirit, yet they receive no benefit because they do not surrender their souls to the guidance and control of divine agencies. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Only to those who wait humbly upon God, who watch for His guidance and grace, is the Spirit given. This promised blessing, claimed by faith, brings all other blessings in its train. It is given according to the riches of the grace of Christ and He is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. Gospel Workers, pages 284 and 285 Wednesday, July 29 The Holy Spirit, the Word, and Witnessing Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 the Scriptures are the great agency in the transformation of character. Christ prayed, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. If studied and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. 
The Holy Spirit comes to convict of sin, and the faith that springs up in the heart works by love to Christ, conforming us in body, soul, and spirit to His own image. Then God can use us to do His will. The power given us works from within, outwardly, leading us to communicate to others the truth that has been communicated to us. The truths of the Word of God meet man's great practical necessity, the conversion of the soul through faith. These grand principles are not to be thought too pure and holy to be brought into the daily life. They are truths which reach to heaven and compass eternity, yet their vital influence is to be woven into human experience. They are to permeate all the great things and all the little things of life. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 100 and 101. If God's professed people would receive the light as it shines upon them from His Word, they would reach that unity for which Christ prayed, that which the Apostle describes, the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is, he says, one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5. The Great Controversy, page 379. Paul and Barnabas declared to the Jews, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Acts chapter 13 verses 46 to 48. The gospel message proclaimed by Christ's disciples was the announcement of his first advent to the world. It bore to men the good tidings of salvation through faith in him. It pointed forward to his second coming in glory to redeem his people and it set before men the hope, through faith and obedience, of sharing the inheritance of the saints in light. This message is given to men today, and at this time there is coupled with it the announcement of Christ's second coming as at hand. The signs which he himself gave of his coming have been fulfilled, and by the teaching of God's word we may know that the Lord is at the door. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 226 and 227. Thursday, July 30. The Life-Transforming Power of the Holy Spirit. Whom Christ pardons, he first makes penitent, and it is the office of the Holy Spirit to convince of sin. Those whose hearts have been moved by the convicting Spirit of God see that there is nothing good in themselves. They see that all they have ever done is mingled with self and sin. Like the poor publican, they stand afar off, not daring to lift up so much as their eyes to heaven and cry, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Luke chapter 18, verse 13, revised version, margin. And they are blessed. There is forgiveness for the penitent, for Christ is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. God's promise is, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. A new heart also will I give you, and I will put my spirit within you. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 and Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 26 and 27. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, pages 7 and 8. God has great and grand resources for man to lay hold of, and in the most simple manner will be developed the working of the divine agencies. The divine teacher says, My spirit alone is competent to teach and to convict of sin. Externals make only a temporary impression upon the mind. I will enforce truth on the conscience, and men shall be my witnesses throughout the world, asserting my claims on man's time, his money, his intellect. All these I purchased on the cross of Calvary. Use my entrusted talents to proclaim the truth in its simplicity. 
let the gospel be sent to all parts of the world, awakening burdened souls to inquire, what must I do to be saved? Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, page 159. When Christ gave his disciples the promise of the Spirit, he was nearing the close of his earthly ministry. He was standing in the shadow of the cross with a full realization of the load of guilt that was to rest upon him as the sin bearer. Before offering himself as the sacrificial victim, he instructed his disciples regarding a most essential and complete gift which he was to bestow upon his followers the gift that would bring within their reach the boundless resources of His grace. I will pray the Father, He said, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. The Savior was pointing forward to the time when the Holy Spirit should come to do a mighty work as His representative. The evil that had been accumulating for centuries was to be resisted by the divine power of the Holy Spirit. The Acts of the Apostles, page 47. For further reading, Lift Him Up, Full Reliance on Christ, page 280, and The Desire of Ages, let not your heart be troubled, pages 667 to 672.